friends, it's Christy, and it's such a pleasure to be back with you on the My Favorite Things YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using this new Birdie Brown set called Hanging With My Nomies. And then I'm also going to be pulling the little bird from Bring Out the Sunshine. I've stamped my images in black licorice hybrid ink on Nina Solar White cardstock so that I can color with my Copics. And I'm starting with this adorable little gnome. He's my favorite from the whole set. And I'm using E00, E11, and E13 for his skin. And then I'm moving on to his beard and I'll be doing that with some warm grays. I'm using W00, W1, and W3. So I want this to actually look like it's gone a little gray. So I'm laying in a pretty thick shadow at the bottom with the W3 and then pulling that up toward his face with the W1 and then softening that with the W00. And I even left a little white space. And then I decided to actually darken that up a bit by bringing in the W5. It was looking a little bit like a white beard that was a little dingy and I definitely wanted it to read as a gray beard. So I added in that W5 and then just went back over my other remaining colors, just saving that white space around his face because I want it to look nice and fluffy and like it's protruding out a little bit there so it would catch more light, more reflection. For his tunic, I wanted to have kind of a peachy tone, so I'm using YR00, YR01, and YR02, laying in a little shadow with that YR02 first on the underside of his arm, and especially under his belt where the fabric is gathered. And then I'm going to blend that out with the YR01, and then fill in the highlight with the YR00. And then I wanted to dirty that up a bit because he's a hardworking guy and I didn't want it to look too feminine. So I added in the YR12, which added just a bit more of a rust tone to the darkest and then went over my other colors again. For his belt and his boots, I'm using E55, E57, and E59 putting a little shadow at the back of his belt where it's wrapping around his body and then in the creases of his boots and kind of where they're curved down toward the ground, blending out with the E57 and then finishing with the E55. For his hat, I wanted kind of a sage green, so I chose YG61, YG63, and YG67. So I'm taking that YG67 and laying in the shadows and also outlining the creases that the artist has drawn and just deepening those up a bit. I want to really create a lot of texture and dimension on this hat um, by just really drawing those out. So um, it just gives it a lot more kind of movement. So once I have those laid in, I'm blending out with the YG63, really softening up that edge of the YG67, and then I can fill in the rest of the space with the YG61. But since it's a larger area, I often like to do a second layer, and so I'm going to go right back over all of the colors that I just did and really um, just increase that saturation and really create even more dimension on that hat. And you'll see what a difference that makes in just a second here. Um, and then once I finished the hat, I also colored in the stems of the daffodils with the YG67 and colored in the leaves of the plant next to him with the lighter two shades. For his pants, I decided to give him some jeans, or he would probably call them dungarees. He just seems like a guy that would say that. Um, and then I'm also going to use the same shades on the flowers next to him, and that is B21, B23, and B26. I just put that darkest color on the left side of those flowers and blended toward the right. 
And then continuing on to the next plant, I'm using YG11, YG13, and YG17. And you could also just use the same greens you've been using all along, but I just thought it'd be nice to have another pop of almost like a fresher type of green. But then I did pull in the YG67 once again, just to add a little line down the center of each of those leaves. For the mushrooms, I'm using E41, E42, E43, and E44. And I just really love the way that these four colors make like the perfect brown mushroom. Um, if you were to only use three, I would probably take out maybe the E42 or the E43, one or the other. Um, but I really like the way that these four colors work together. To me, they just are the perfect shades. I also added in a little crease on the mushroom on the far right there. Um, there was nothing drawn in there, but it was just kind of where the mushroom top tapered in, and I thought it would make it look a little more flared out. So moving on to my bird, I'm using B01, B02, and B04 for the body, so we get a nice bright blue bird. I put the shadows on the back of his body and blended forward to keep his face nice and light. And I even brought in the B00 to lighten up the front of his face even more. Then I'm going to pull out those uh, pinky shades, those peachy pinks that I used on the gnome's tunic for his breast. So he has a nice rosy breast like a typical bluebird. And I'll use W5 to color in his beak. Then for the flowers in his arms, I thought they looked like daffodils, so I wanted to color them that way. So I'm using Y11, Y13, and Y15, and I'm going to put the darkest shade on that little crease that's been drawn on each petal. And then I'm also going to fill in the centers so that they have kind of a base coat of yellow as well. And uh, once I have those all blended out, I'm going to grab the YRO4 and I'm going to add a little ring around the outside edge of that inner portion. And uh, I'm kind of dotting it on so it's not like a perfect straight line. And then also putting a dot in the center so it looks like you're looking at the daffodils head on. And then I'll just trim these images out with their coordinating dies. For the focal panel, I used the Wonky Stitched Circle Stacks Dynamics to cut out some snow cone cardstock and some green apple cardstock. And then I also used the Grassy Hills Dynamics on the green apple. I popped the snow cone piece into my Misty so that I could stamp my sentiment with extreme black ink. And there are so many great sentiments in this set, but I chose the one that says my world is better with you in it. I thought that one was very timely right now. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using Peach Bellini cardstock for my base and stamping another one of the gnomes. This one looks pretty silly and using the sentiment that says there's gnome one like you, which is sure to make someone smile. So now it's time for the assembly and I'm going to start by adhering my grassy border down to the bottom of the focal panel, just using a little liquid glue for that and making sure it's lined up nice and straight. Next I'll add my gnome. I always like to add my largest images first and kind of get them situated. So I want to make sure that he is right underneath that sentiment so the tip of his hat is kind of drawing your eye up toward it. Then I'm going to take this little cluster of blue flowers and adhere that over on the left hand side to kind of balance him out since they're nice and tall. But before I press that down firmly I want to grab this little leaf cluster and uh, stick that down behind so it's kind of poking out on the left hand side so they make a nice little cluster. Then I'll take the taller mushroom and I'm going to add that um, on the other side of those plants so that it's tipping toward the gnome. And I'll take the shorter mushroom and add that down in front, kind of hiding the stems of the other plants. And finally, I'll add my little bluebird sitting on top of the mushroom cap, kind of looking at the gnome. So it makes a nice little um, scene there that you can see a story going on. 
The pattern papers I'm using today are from the Woodgrain Whimsy and Spring Whimsy 6x6 pads, and I've die cut all of my papers down with the A2 Stitch Rectangle Stacks Set 2. So I'm going to adhere this kind of taupey wood grain print that I thought went really well with the color of our mushrooms. I'm adhering that flat down to the card. Then I've got this really pretty springtime plaid um, that's going to go down at the base. And then I've got a little strip of that peachy shade that really matches with the gnome's tunic and the bluebird's breast and that's gonna go right above the plaid pattern. I also used that same die to cut off the right edge of the focal panel just for something different. So I'm gonna line that up on the right hand side of the card so that the stitching detail all matches up and then press that down into place. So unfortunately I realized that a bit of glue splooged out while running it through the die cutting machine. So to cover that up, I shifted the smaller mushroom a bit and added a small ladybug. And then to balance that out, I also added another ladybug at the top right. And there is another peek at the inside of my card and that is going to complete this one for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the May edition of Christy Gets Crafty with My Favorite Things. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. Subscribe to My Favorite Things for more inspiring videos just like these here on screen. Bye-bye.